Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, and I'm the author of Electrical Forensics. And we're here to talk about radio frequency biological deformities, and in particular, radio frequency biological deformities in the Diefenbachia plant. And we're going to start with this plant. Now, this plant has very dark, shiny leaves, and it's a very typical response by plants to biologically harmful radio frequency fields. Now, this plant was actually grown when all my wireless devices were in service, and it sustained a lot of radio frequency damage, and is continuing to grow in that damaged growth format. Now, I took all my radio frequency devices out of service, and this is now the growth that I get on control plants around my home. So you can see it's a very small, stunted growth. It's nothing like what it should be like. And this size of leaf is about typical on the plants that I see around the home. Now, all these plants are Diefenbachias. Now, the Diefenbachia is supposed to have very large pattern leaves. And as you can see, this leaf is very large compared to these leaves. So you're probably wondering how did I get the Diefenbachia to grow with very large pattern leaves in a high radio frequency field? Well, you're going to be very surprised and the answer is down here. So this plant actually has a battery powered watch in its roots and that watch has a second hand. And it's a watch that looks something like this. So there's a very similar watch in the soil. And it's really improved the growth of the plant. I was quite shocked. So it appears that when you subject a plant to pulsed DC signals from a battery powered watch, it really creates radio frequency resistance in the plant. Now, we have another plant here. So this one also has very large pattern leaves like the Diefenbachia is supposed to have. So you can see this one is looking quite well. And let's see how we got this one to grow. So we connected this one electrically using foil into the master bathroom tile floor. So this plant essentially was grounded, electrically grounded, to a floor that has very low levels of electrification on it. And it appeared to respond favorably to that configuration. Now, we have another plant here. Let me see that. It also has large leaves that are very close to what you would expect a Diefenbachia to grow. So how do we get this one to grow? Well the answer is right here. So if you look at this plant, it's in a metal pot. It has the positive to the pot and the negative lead from the battery goes up and it's just sitting on the stem. And that one and a half volts that the plant has been subjected to between its roots and its stem has produced excellent growth. And that's because wireless radiation interferes with the natural DC voltage systems of nature. And in particular, there's a DC voltage in the atmosphere. And it appears that wireless radiation systems collapse the atmospheric DC voltage. And we have another one here also showing very large growth and is looking very healthy. So how did I get this one to grow in a high-powered, biologically harmful radio field that exists at my home from transmitting utility meters and cell phone towers? Well, it's another one that has a battery, but it's different this time because if we look at this one, the pot is connected to the negative terminal and the positive goes off into the plant. 
So by connecting this one to the opposite polarity of a single cell battery at one and a half volts, it grew something like the normal Typhon Bacchia. So these were my discoveries of 2013, is that when you're in a high powered biologically harmful radio frequency field that is damaging your plants, you can actually recover those plants and prevent them from deforming by using these techniques. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and if you want more information on the subject, you'll find it in Electrical Forensics. Thank you.